Dowie podcast. Uh, today with me is the wonderful and inscrutable John Nicklin. Uh, John is a longtime personal friend of mine. Uh, we have eaten many a lamb kebab together. And uh, John is also one of the most experienced and interesting people in the Chinese martial arts expat scene. So I'm sure we're going to have a wonderful and fascinating conversation today. Hello, John. Hey, hey, hey Robbie. Like, actually, it's, I, I, I wonder what to call you because we've called you so many different nicknames over the years, right? Yeah, you can call me Robert or Robbie, whatever, sure, sure. whatever, whatever the feeling is to you at any moment. Um, so you and I have some history and that's pretty cool. We've known each other for how long would you say? Uh, God, it's got to, it's got to be close to 10 years, nine, nine years. It's been a while and we've had, a, we've eaten a few kebabs together and some, uh, some various uh, Xinjiang food, I think mostly. Yeah, some some escapades, uh, some of which not not suitable for public consumption. I think eh, typically martial arts ex escapades, not that bad. <laughs> but uh, so you are um, from England uh, originally, but you have spent much time in mainland China and Hong Kong and other places. Um, can you tell us a little bit about? What took you over there and what made you fascinated in with Chinese martial arts? Uh, wow, okay. Um, it's, it's gonna be quite, quite long. I take it we've got time today. Uh, um, so my, my background personally is that I'm, I'm mixed. I'm sort of uh, half Singaporean Chinese and half British. Um, and so, yep, I grew up in the UK, um, not, uh, not practicing a lot of martial arts, unlike, you know, some other kids who did, you know, judo or boxing or whatever from a very young age. Um, so I didn't really get into martial arts until uh, maybe 17 or 18. Um, you know, you know, there, there was all of that stuff, you know, I'm sure the same as everyone else. Like there was a lot of karate and taekwondo and judo around um, and, and Wing Chun. Um, but you know, the thing that actually got me interested, um, like when, when I was a teenager, I started getting interested in, in uh, Asian culture generally, like uh, Buddhism, Taoism, uh, also the, the martial arts, uh, through, through a lot of the books that, that you would have read at the same time, right? So, you know, Robert Smith's books, Bruce Kumar Francis's books. Um, and that was, that was the first stuff that sort of got me interested. You, there, there's something there. Um, and then I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to think of the actual timeline here. Um, I did uh, what they call Wudang or practical Tai Chi at university. Um, so that's uh, Dan Doherty's group from, uh, it's, it's basically, it's Hong Kong, uh, it, it's an offshoot of Hong Kong Wu style. Um, they, they did a lot of uh, applications and uh, uh, sort of spar sparring competitions, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and, and then sort of there was a long period where, uh, sorry, but, but at this point, I didn't speak Chinese. So straight after university, I, I went to China, learned Chinese uh, in, the, in the north of China, Tangshan. And then, um, then after that, there was sort of like six years of just working, like, you know, like career stuff. Um, and so, I mean, so martial arts wise, it was kind of, they were sort of, you know, I did try to do a little bit of Xing Yi, like Sun Style Xing Yi, or try to do a little bit of Yichuan with a teacher here in the UK. Um, but, you know, it was all, it was all sort of uh, basics, just, just sort of setting the foundation. Um, and like the real actual proper learning of like internal stuff only happened in Shanghai, um, which, so I moved to Shanghai in 2012. And I met you pretty soon after that, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that long after that. But reflecting on this, you must be a real polymath because I remember that your Chinese linguistic ability was excellent at the time, and uh, you certainly weren't a slouch when it came to martial arts. Well, I, I, I kind of for the language stuff, I have to because I use it for my work, right? Which is you know totally non martial arts related. Like, uh, um, but on on the martial arts side, you know, I, I still feel, you know, I've, I've gotten uh, gotten some experiences with people who do have real skills. Uh, so, you know, at least I know where the, what we're aiming for, right? 
um, and then that, you know that's that's Shanghai. That's the people. I mean, we we met slightly different people maybe uh, in Shanghai, but you know, I think you'd probably have the same feeling as me that you know those guys, the, the those maybe three or four or five guys, you know, really were sort of uh, had some real skills. Yeah, who did you study with in Shanghai? Well, so I mean, you know, obviously on the Xingyi, my main practice even nowadays is still Xingyi, right? So it's it's my Song style Xingyi teacher Dai Dai Xueqi, um, who's you know a student of the the, the Song family. Um, and then, uh, but you know, at the same time, I was still trying to look for decent people. Uh, I looked very for a very long time for like a Shui Jiao teacher um and uh, uh tai chi various tai chi teachers i did a uh, uh, almost a year of chen chen uh, the the new frame chen style um but uh like very close very close to the end of my shanghai time actually was the time when i found like what i thought was like a real tai chi teacher with with pretty interesting skills and he's jiang zongbao like uh, so he see so he's really interesting because he's the the um, he studied with, I mean, maybe, maybe people will uh, doubt this, but he studied with, so a, a student of Tian Zhao, the Tian branch of Yang style, right? They're also Feng Zhiqiang in Chen style, right? And also Hao style, like the Wu Hao style from like how, you know, the, um, the representative of the Hao family who lived in Shanghai, right? So, I mean, he's, he's a tiny guy. Um, like you know, up to my shoulder or whatever. But he's uh, like he can take whatever power you throw at him and like not move or not be affected. You can't you can't affect his center. And he has you know the pung the pung energy or the pung power whenever he wants it, right? So you know he's 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 really good. Um, I think he's like seventy now, maybe sixty five, seventy. So is his style? Does he teach all three styles, or is his style a synthesis? Uh, he, so uh, like quite a few other teachers, he views the form as just a, a, a vehicle for whatever internal mechanic, mechanics he's teaching. Um, so he gives them the option of um, studying uh, studying old, old, a version of old Yang, like middle frame, um, or his Chen style. Um, you, you can choose. Uh, I, I ended up studying, so he has like a senior student called Li Xiaolong, like Bruce Lee. Like the same, <laughs> like every everyone when everyone hears that name, they're like Bruce Lee. Wow, um, exactly. Bruce Lee he must be pretty good. He, yeah, so his senior student is this uh, um, Shanghainese guy called Li Xiaolong, and um, also like fifties or sixties uh, in age. Who actually um, his main things before he studied with Jiang were um, Shui Jiao and Chang style Tai Chi, which is really rare outside of outside of Sh uh, Shanghai. Um, and he, so he actually just spent like six months throwing me around, showing me like all the basic shai, shai jiao throws, um, and also teaching me his own customized form. So, so I never actually learned the, the old yang or the chen, which is really, is a real shame, um, from, from him, but that, but that group, it, they're, they're more about the skills. So they would, um, you know, they would just say, okay, do do a bit of that form or whatever, or that basic movement, and then let, let's do the four corner push hands or something like that, right? Like, like properly, like not, because, you know, one of the things they said is that a lot of people do four corners, like Peng Lu Ji An, sloppily or wrong or with the wrong mechanics or whatever. Yeah, well, it's interesting when you meet the old school Tai Chi people, the way that they train usually has an emphasis on cultivating basic skills and the basic skills are understood to be the high level skills right so that's yeah, one basic of, body skills yeah yeah it's one of the big advantages to meeting with those people with that older mindset um mm -hmm. now you also have been around to a lot of other places though and experienced martial arts in other places um you spent time up north what have you have you seen anything up north of interest to you well, so, uh, I mean, I, to be honest, like my main trip uh, was actually before I moved to China. So I did a trip um, late 2009, early 2010, where I, I really tried to go around various people that I'd heard of to, to see. Um, so that trip, that trip went to the home of Yang style, uh, Tai Chi. Um, I went to 
I mean, it's kind of ironic. So I went to Shanxi uh, and met like the head of Song Style, uh, Song Guahua. But at that time, you know, I didn't know that I would end up studying under his his student, right? So you know, that was that was more just you know trying to understand the style. Um, then visited like Chen Village, visited, um, met a couple, met one of Zhao, a Zhao Bao teacher. Um, and I'm trying to think who else I met on that trip. Oh yeah, um, but I mean, I ended up, I end, the end of that trip was in Shanghai. So I, I ended up meeting uh, one of the other Xing Yi teachers in Shanghai, who's uh, uh, Wang Senlin, who's like a but very nice Hebei Xing Yi. It's, it's a pretty uh, pretty broad and, and interesting set of teachers that you met. That was a great trip. I mean, that was that was a really interesting trip. Uh, I mean, if it, it probably would have been more useful if I'd had more foundation at that time, because you know when you when you visit them at that time with not really much in the way of like root or internal skills, you don't get it because of course they can knock you over. Like uh, you know, <laughs> it's just it at that time. Right. Like, I think, I think if I'd had more skill myself at that time, I would have appreciated it more. Um, also, like with the Yang, with the home of Yang style, I actually went, so I went to the village, like Guangfu, but I also went to the nearest city, which is Handan. Um, and I, I was pretty impressed with the, the people in Handan because they're from Yang Banho's uh, grandson, I think. Like, uh, they're, they're like, you know, sixth generation or whatever, but coming down from Yang Banho's uh, material. Were there lots of people practicing Taiji out there? Or? Oh, tons. Like, uh, I mean, Yang, Yang style, like, uh, you know, Handan is like, you know, you, you can't turn a corner without bumping into a, a Taiji teacher. Like, uh, because, you know, it's it's not just the Yang style, it's the Hao style people as well. So, you know, I, there's there's like, you know, I could name a couple of dozen quite easily, right? But But, I mean, you know, obviously with varying levels of skill, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, you know, it's always interesting in, in the smaller Chinese cities, sometimes when you're walking around, you can see a lot of people practicing. Every once in a while, you see somebody who is really good. And then, you know, most of the time, it's just uh, nice, nice old people practicing in the park. Yeah, just just because it's China doesn't mean everyone is a grand, Kung Fu Grandmaster, right? Yeah. Yeah, either that or they're hiding their ability from you. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's hard to know. So you um, you also did another, well, you've done other interesting projects and I'm gonna throw a curveball at you here because I just remembered there was a time um, when we both hung out in, um, in a cursed uh, internet forum that I won't name that was for internal martial arts practice. And right. I remember that you were, you had a bit of notoriety for helping people to translate martial arts documents. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, yeah, because uh, basically, yeah, because I had the time uh, at that time to, to do it. Which documents did you translate? Uh, I mean, so a long, long, long time ago, I translated some articles about Wuhao, Wuhao teachers, um, like the tai, Wuhao Tai Chi. Uh, and then the other big bunch of translation I did was uh, on some Dai style articles, Dai style Xing Yi. So when you um, when you did that, do you feel like the literary part helped to deepen your practice, or do you feel like um, do you feel another way? Uh, I mean, the, the thing, right? The thing about uh, maybe, maybe other people feel differently. Uh, the thing about the the martial classics for like each style, right? Um, Quan Jing, right? Um, or Quan Pu, Quan Pu. Uh, they don't mean much unless you actually do the style, right? So like, it, because every single style, like, I mean, you know, Will's Mantis Quan Pu or my, you know, the, the Quan Pu for, for Song Style Xing Yi, which for us would be the, the four uh, internal classics, right? Sigong, uh, Nei Gong Si Jing. Um, you know, they don't mean much unless you actually do the style because they're written in like code basically. So, you know, like there's a die style, I mean, Maybe you would have understood it, but one would have understood it better than me. But you know, when I was translating the Dai style material, like you know, they have a concept of um, overturning heaven and earth, like Fan Qian Kun, right, or Tian Di Fan, or things like this. And apparently, in Dai style, that has a very specific meaning. Um, but you know, for me, it, it didn't mean anything, right? So I, I was just helping to translate. 
Yeah, well, and you know, when they bring the when they bring the Taoist language into it too, of course, it's different from the Taoist interpretation. Right, and it would be different from how, like, if you were doing Taoist meditation or cultivation, it would be different yeah. again, right? Even yeah. the same sentence. And and the other problem is that what you said about lineage is so true. If you look at different genres within the martial arts style or within Taoism or with any of those things, um, yeah. just because you can read one genre doesn't mean doesn't mean you can read every other part of the genre. So. Um, Definitely. And, and also there's, there's, a, there's a thing, uh, maybe it's just, I know it occurs in Xingyi and also in Mantis. So some of the theory, because you know, like in Xingyi, we inherited the theory from Xingyi Liu He, right? right? A lot of it. Um, it might be a controversial point of view, but like some of the old Xingyi Liu He theory doesn't really apply that well to modern Xingyi. No, I agree. And right. uh, I've seen... Uh, I've met practitioners of Xingyi Lioha who are very harsh about modern Xingyi. And, yeah. you know, I say to them, yeah. I mean, our, our power generation is completely different. Yeah, I mean, we, we have to be honest about what we're practicing, right? You know, and, and um, you do have to sort of, I think everyone sort of has to figure it out for themselves. Like, okay, if you're going to read those classics, right, you have to realize a lot of those sayings were written for i mean some, some of them still apply but like a lot some of the sayings like like in xin liu he there's certain jin right yeah like uh, uh i can't remember the names like du or jue or or something like that and at least in in our line or, or our branch the, like the, the specific practice pra, pra, sorry practice methods don't it's not a thing in in you know our line of modern xin anymore right yeah, yeah, exactly. And the other thing is that it's also always possible that the interpretation of a certain old concept might change throughout the generations. Yeah. Or it might become, it could change or it could become, um, you know, differently interpreted. And so that would yeah. also alter the, the lineage perception. So that's, I've always felt like if you want to understand the texts, for the first couple of years of any particular genre of text, it's really helpful if somebody sits down with you and shows you how to read it that's what I there, there's no substitute for the, the sort of the the in-person guidance i mean you know we, i'm sure both of us have met like a lot of people who are very smart people but you know that you can go on entire like more, right you can really end up hurting yourself just you want to translate that uh, 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 uh walk on fire enter the devil uh, i'm not sure sorry that's a really terrible translation um walking on fire and letting a demon in maybe yeah something like that so, um, so what does that what's the meaning of that well i mean my understanding is that you know a, a lot of these you know especially chinese uh, certain types of qigong certain types of martial arts practice you can do yourself serious damage not just physical but mental um like i mean there are certain like misunderstandings like for example right with the the sound that you make in xin liu he right so like you know it, it's it's actually it's a real part of xin liu he right the thunder sound uh lei sheng and and some people interpret that to mean like um like holding your breath right when you when you fudge in mm. um you know which is really really bad for your your overall health right and you probably burst the blood vessels in. yeah yeah, so you can you can get hurt doing these practices. Yeah, and some of the other like you know where you're directing directing chi in in certain areas or whatever you know that can I'm, I've heard that can you know send people into weird mental states and things. I have uh, certainly had the opportunity of meeting a few people who have experienced weird mental states from practicing chi. Um, so moving on uh, from there, another really fascinating project that you did was you wandered all over China and helped to do a documentary about uh, Xing Yichuan. Mm -hmm. And you met a lot of people and um, you collaborated together with um, a person named Will, uh, who, is, who is running a very cool um, martial arts social media thing. Um, if, I, if I'm not incorrect, it's called... Is it the is it the monkey steals the peach? Monkey steals peach. That's right. Yeah, Will 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 Will's a great guy and and, and doing a lot of good work. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot a lot of work goes into that channel actually, like yeah. uh, behind the scenes. 
it's fascinating. But what what you did, because I think I'll I'll try to hopefully have a chance to talk to him in the future too. But mm. what you did with him was you went all over China and talked to various Shini masters. And mm. while you did that, you did these very good quality uh, interviews with them and helped us to find out more about Xingyi from the holistic perspective. A lot of the time we just look at individual lineages and you know what, what our particular lineages think, but you talk to a lot of different people and got a lot of different viewpoints. And I found that to be fascinating. Do you mind sharing with us a little bit about how that project came to be and uh, what it was like to do it? Okay, so I mean, you know, w w once again, I, I can't take too much credit for that because really I was just on my holidays and I love Xingyi, so you know it was it was fun for me. Um, it really, really, Will did a lot of the hard work and planning and and filming and editing, you know, to to produce like the final product, um, which was the documentary videos. Um, but in terms of the thinking behind it, I mean, Will, you know, he wanted something to showcase not just uh, a certain line order, but actually like the historical development of the style, um, you know, because we we all know the the historical root of it is Xin Liu He first, then you know that turned into Dai style, and and then from Dai, Dai the Dai family taught uh, Li Luoneng, oh, well, directly or indirectly. I don't want to get into historical controversies, um, but and and then who founded modern Xin Yi Chuan, right? So so we wanted to at least show the Dai style to to Xin Yi part of that, and later on we'll manage to do. The Xin Liu He, you know, so he he managed to cover like the three main sort of branches of what you would call Xin Yi these days, like uh, including some Xin Yi Ba, I think. Um, so yeah, that was that was the genesis of it. And so Will, you know, came to me and said, "Well, look, if we do this, where are the places you you, you think uh, we should go and, and and the people we should see?" So I, you know, I I'm aware of m most of most of the more well known teachers in the, the mainland for for Xin Yi anyway. Um, and so, you know, I made some suggestions and there, there were some limitations because of the time we, you know, we didn't have much time to do it. Uh, I think we only had like a, a nine days or 10 days or something in, in which, you know, everyone was going to be in China at, at the same time. Um, and so, yeah, we, we drew up a list of names and contacted the teachers and, and, and saw whether they were willing to meet us or not. And, you know, most of them said yes, which was nice. Bit of a whirlwind tour there. Yeah, well, I mean, look, for, for, Xing, for Xingyi, like, you've got to do Tianjin and, you know, I mean, the, the sort of cradles of, I mean, I, I, maybe the Beijing guys listening to this will, will be uh, not, not happy that we didn't see some of the Beijing crowd. But uh, uh, I, I think they're, they're, the reason we didn't do that was because they're very well known already. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I had the feeling that, you know, for example, Li, Li Cunyi. Right, Li Tunyi is a very famous figure in Xingyi history. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the fighting reputation of Xingyi is because of Li Tunyi mm -hmm. uh, and his his disciples, right? And yet nowadays you don't actually hear that much of his like grand students or, or great grand students or whatever. So so we tried to meet at least two of his like two different lines coming from him um, in Tianjin, and you know Tianjin has tons. Like I mean, there's so many different. Like there must be like at least ten or ten or eleven different sub branches of, of, of Xing Yi and Tianjin. Plus they have Baji Chuan. Plus they have you know long fist styles and everything as well. I mean it's it's a real martial arts kind of a paradise. Doing martial arts in Tianjin is a memorable experience. <laughs> I, um, when I was my, my Chinese wasn't so good, I went to visit um, a couple of masters, and one of them was a Tongbei, uh, a, an old gentleman who did Tongbei, and he was in his eighties. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. And uh, he practiced, he showed me his practice and uh, he said, how is it? And I didn't realize that um, 不错 doesn't mean good. It means not bad. And it can be kind of just condescending. It can be a bit dismissive. Yeah. So I said, I said, 不错, and he, um, he looked at me with a flash of anger came across his eyes and he was like, not bad, not bad. I'll show you not bad. And he chased right, me. Because you never say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I, I thought I'm, I'm being uh, slapped by a very old man and I can do nothing about it. So um, is, uh, is a wonderful, wonderful place if you like martial arts and you're, you're, you're not afraid of making mistakes and getting- of, of getting slapped around. Yeah, no, very true, very true. I mean, I actually, uh, so after uh, you know, we did the series, I realized that there's a Tianjin Shuai Jiao school, like, which is still going 
really strong. Um, and if I go back there, I mean, I'll visit the Xingyi, definitely visit the Xingyi teachers as well, um, yeah. especially Zhang Jun, who is, you know, he was, you know, such such good skill and, and a really nice guy too. Um, but the Shui Jiao school, I, I want to visit as well because, you know, they have like, um, they have like weekly matches that you can just go in and watch apparently. Oh, be cool, right? Also went up to to Shanxi, right? To to Taigu. Right, right. So the the you know the the center of Xingyi, you know, in historical terms, and still now, is Taigu in in, in Shanxi, um, and so yeah, it's it's the home of not only Song style but also Che style, uh, you know, two big the two big Shanxi styles. So you know, so slightly slightly different method of practice, slightly different body method, um, and so yeah, I mean, in my case. You know, I practice song style, and so that was very easy to arrange. The the chur style, we we were sort of relied on. So what, what I didn't realize is that in Taigu, a lot of the the younger generation, at least, I mean, everyone knows each other, right? So regardless of whether you're chur style or song style or whatever, they actually a lot of them practice together. So um, one of my kung fu brothers, um, Sun Qian, like he he arranged. Uh, he said. I know a bunch of great chess style guys who, you know, they, they, uh, you know, they spar regularly, they train hard, blah, blah, blah. So we were like, oh, great. You know, so we, we went along and we were introduced to um, a whole bunch of, um, uh, they're actually from slightly different Che, che like sub, sub branches of Che. But um, so I did the, the most famous one we met would be Gao Baodong, who is like, I think he's called King of Spear in, in Chinese magazines or whatever, like a, uh, you know, he's he's probably the certainly like you know the most senior in, in terms of generations uh, who's still alive. Um, yeah, that's probably right. Uh, and 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 the other guys, but the other guys were much younger, so were from like you know the generation below or even the generation below that. So uh, um, it was really interesting because they there are there are there are slight differences in the way they practice even between themselves, right? So for and, and they were very martial, you know. They were they were practicing on like dummies and and you know gloving up and uh, they had like mats and stuff like that. That's great. And you know, I saw some of the schools in in Shanghai uh, starting to do these sort of more mixed format um, sparring as well. And so it's it's good, you know. Uh, people are people are working at preserving the also the physical. Uh, you know, in combative parts of the arts, it's very important. In terms right. of in terms of Che style, I'm not very familiar with it. What's the what's the specialization of Che style? What's different about Che style from other styles? Oh wow, um, I, I don't I don't really want to, yeah, because I because I'm not an expert at Che style, but just just the look of it, right? The look of it as a style, um, you know, it's it's a softer style of singing. I mean, I, I think you could like. Um, mo most of the practice, like um, less, so you know when we talk about gang, right, hard practice, gang jing, so they're, they're not, they don't look hard, right, so uh, I would say che would be an example of, you know, soft on the outside, strong, very strong on the inside, right, so like they, they look very relaxed and, and pretty soft in, in the way that they practice. Also, the frame is is more compact, right? So they're not as extended um, in their postures. Uh, certainly, if you compare to some of like, like Zhang, Zhao Dong's uh, Xing Yi, like is, is very different. Like so Zhang Zhao Dong is very, very extended, right? The front, the front hand and, and just, yeah. the, right? Um, right, but, just but, audio but, Right, and Che would be the opposite of that. Like people often say, like when they're looking at Che, like you know, they, they feel like the hands are very close in, like kind of very, uh, like you know, just very sort of short distances. Um, and you know, there's a reason for that. Like they they emphasize more the um, what would you call it, like uh, rap guo, like wrapping inward pulling aspects of of the stances and the and the power generation. Um, and arguably, they're they're slightly closer to to how Dai style was, hmm. um, like you know, because Che Jai, right? So the the you know the the founder of Che style, like he he apparently directly studied with the Che family after, because the history of it is Li Li Ruoneng went back to Hebei, right? So you know, apparently after Li Ruoneng went back to Hebei, he said to Che Jai, ah, you can just directly study with my teacher. Um, you know, the the historical accuracy of that, who knows? But you know, I think the evidence is in the way that they practice.
Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Did you have a chance to go to um to Hebei province at all? Uh, you mean down to Lyon and hometown? Yeah. Shenzhou and no, uh, no. So the 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 thing is, right? So the I I am most interested in a certain branch of Hebei. Um, that uh, let's let's put it another way. So in Lilonan's hometown, right, the prevailing branch of Xingyi mm -hmm. um, nowadays, I'm not that interested in, right? Um, I, I am interested in, in some of the Xingyi that was in his home, like uh, some of the other branches, like, uh, well, I mean, Guo Yunshen should be around there somewhere, yeah. right? Um, and also some of his other, um, it's a bit of a complicated situation because there's there's a couple of branches coming from Lilonan's grandson. Yeah. And like one of them I'm interested in and one, one I'm not. Like, let's just leave it at that. You know, it's it's fascinating. I was in Hongshui in 2011 mm. and um, I met with some of the, well, I met with a lot of the representatives there. It was, um, we, we got invited down to do, a, to, to participate in the discipleship ceremony of one of the masters there. And the thing that I noticed about their practice is that even though it's based on the five elements and 12 animals, I mean, like the Lilo and Ong style, right? Mm. Um, it is um, heavily, heavily influenced by uh, Dai style. So it's got a very cool Dantian rotation method. And, like uh, obvious Dantian rotation? Obvious Dantian ro rotation, the power emission, um, it looks like a cross between, you know, the, the Song style where, they, where the, it shakes kind of because it's Dantian? Mm. got that but then they also have a, a hobe style shape and they have the squatting you mean monkey squatting like yeah, yeah they have they have something like monkey squatting when they do the movements there's um there's an obvious drawing in of the oh, the back bow the back bow right um like it's like you pull in the dantian and it sinks down and pulls in and then when it emits it it pops out oh wow it's obvious dantian like really old school Dantian Gong that you can tell comes from the Muslim lineage and then goes up through, you know, Dai style. Dai, Dai, and then into, into Xing Yijian. But wait, wait, but which, can you remember who, the, which branch this was? Like who? There were two main masters that, that I met. One was uh, Cui Jie Li. Mm. And he was, he was, part, he was showing more stuff because he was doing, um, he was doing the discipleship ceremony. So him and his students mm. were practicing. And then the other one was uh, actual family descendant of Li Luan Um Li Jun something? I think so, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I think I know. Right. I mean, Cui Jie, Cui Jie Li, I'm, I'm aware of. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really interesting. I, I'll, I'll have to visit um, those guys on another trip, I guess. I think so. Like, and and another... I, didn't, I didn't realize, I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't realize they had that. Yeah, yeah. It's really neat. I mean, that's so, this is the thing that I thought would be interesting for Song style people or Shanxi style people is to go back to, um, especially Hang Shui, where there's a lot of masters. And uh, the, pro the, the problem is you can see everything, right? Because you can also mm. see Dang style and Fu Jian mm. uh, mm. you know, and, and so on. So, you know, it's a, it's a mixed bag and you'd have to dig, you'd have to dig around for a while. But um, next time you go, I, I do encourage you to uh, yeah, no, I mean, we. Should, I mean, the th the thing, uh, uh, you know, as as Will sort of alluded to, I think, I I think Will's done a separate uh, video about this. Like, uh, he, because of the problems with China, like getting into China um, from the last two and a half years or whatever, um, he's kind of shifted his focus to Indonesia in like in, for twenty twenty three, right? So, I mean, at, there there was a plan um, to to do like a you know Tongzhou. Yeah, yeah. So Tangzhou, so Tangzhou would be, you know, we would be covering, ideally, we would be covering like Baji, Pigua, Tongbei, uh, you know, because Tangzhou has so many styles, like even Liu He, Liu He Quan, um, you know, so we would try and cover like four or five styles. I mean, that's a lot um, to do in one one trip or one video, um, mm -hmm. but maybe, maybe it would have to be split up into like four or five videos. But I mean, it, you know, Tangzhou is such a, like a martial arts hotbed, right? Yeah, but we'll all get back into China soon enough, and then. Uh... Well, I mean, I'm actually moving back to China next month. So, are, are you moving into the mainland? Yeah, uh, it's it's for work reasons. Like, uh, you know, my my boss thinks it's better for 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 work development. So, I'm moving to Beijing. Oh, Beijing! Wow, you're going to be right in the middle of it all. That's exciting. <laughs>
my my wife is not happy, but uh, you know, it, it'll it'll only be for like a a year or year or so. You can take her with you. She can um, you can drop over to Tianjin once in a while and have gold. <laughs> she's she she's a she's a southern girl. She she don't she don't like the north. <laughs> uh, I see. Well, I got to say, the weather is nicer in the south. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's still eighteen degrees down there right now. Yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. I'm. I mean, you know, you're English, and so you're used mm. to crappy weather, and I'm Canadian, so I'm used. To I mean, it. anything anything is an improvement on the UK weather, quite frankly. <laughs> Welcome to I mean, not not right now, not right now. This is <laughs> this is like <laughs> great. Um, so what do you think the future is? Uh, I know this is a big question, but what do you think the future is of of Xingyi? That's a huge question. Um, oh God. Uh, okay, within China or outside of China? Both. Uh, okay, we, we, let's do within China because I'm more clear about what, what's actually going to happen. So, uh, you you know you're aware, like there's sort of three streams in China. Like there's the academia, Xueyuan, Xueyuan Pai, right? So uh, what's it called, like sports wushu? <laughs> so the sports wushu movement, I mean, that will just keep on going probably down its own road. But, um, you know, there's, it, th that's just forms. Like there's no, there's not much martial content being trained there. Um, then you've got the big cities where uh, most of the people interested in Xingyi, like there's no young kids. I mean, it's certainly never when in my group in Shanghai, there were no, also, no young kids. The hobby thing and... Yeah, well, I mean, and the age group as well. The age group is a problem because, like, the the kind of people, the age group of people who are taking up Xingyi Chen now is like, you know, in their th already in their thirties or forties, right? Um, often with no like martial arts uh, background or, or foundation, so it makes it makes things very difficult. My my sifu had had this problem, um, and and then and then, but then in the countryside, right, the small towns, actually, that's where people have the time and the inclination to train the martial stuff, right? So th this is why you see this, where often some of the best performances you see, like best martial performances, are from like some town in the middle of nowhere or some, yeah. you know, taxi driver wearing a Muslim cap or whatever, right? Because the television hasn't gotten to them to the same to the same extent. Yeah, because they don't have so many distractions and they don't have to, they don't, you know, the pressure is not as bad living in a third tier city. You know, the cost of living, the pace of life, all this kind of stuff. Being in a third tier city is nice. <laughs> Again, my wife would disagree, but uh, but I, I like I like third tier cities. I like going to the small towns. Yeah, you know, if you can deal with it, um, I often hear the people in the in the smaller towns say, "Hey, we're retirement cities." Kaifeng is a yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would, I would, but uh, you know, I I think I'd have to uh, sort of uh, go leave my wife in like a big city and then just see her occasionally. Yeah, well, you can be um, she can be the the rabbit girl on the moon, and you can be the archer. <laughs> Good reference, nice. Yes, I'd I'd love to do that. Create that. Create that. Um, Sort of dynamic uh, magpie ridge and uh meet up once oh again. the magpie bridge Chit for the rest of the nice. time you can go nice, to nice. good reference mm -hmm. um, but okay so so that's the like inside china part of it then like outside china um i i genuinely think actually there's a lot of interest nowadays in seeing each uh, outside of china um like you know people are more and more interested i i'm getting i'm sure you're getting the same like people are just saying hey do you do you know a good Xing Yi Chuan teacher near you know somewhere in Germany or somewhere in France or somewhere in the US or, or Canada or whatever I mean in Canada's case they just go to you or your teacher right <laughs> Boy, you know I, they, well certainly they go, go to my teacher I wish mm. it were the case I don't know why uh, in Toronto I've never um, never even mentioned the word Xing Yi in Toronto for some reason really but we can psychologize me on a different day um but yeah, I hear you. People are people are looking for Xingyi practice. If you know if you know anybody in Toronto you think is serious, send them my way. I mm. I'd love to have one or two serious friends that I practice with. But uh, yeah, the idea of opening a big school is not a not a not a. One oh no! I mean, okay, right? Yeah, we're probably like, I mean, Xingyi is an art. I just don't think it's suitable for big schools, to be honest. Like, it's not. It's never going to be like the ten thousand student Taekwondo school. Like, there's just no way. The the art just doesn't lend itself to that. Um, 
but yeah, I think there is a lot of interest out, outside of China. And actually, I think for uh, maintaining the full, the, the situation overseas is that there are not as many like, like fully qualified teachers, right? Right. So, but in terms, of, like, I think there is an opportunity there to like keep the full curriculum and syllabus and ability, um, perhaps you know, even better than the situation in China, because you know, I, I think there's a better training atmosphere, maybe. But, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like what you said about the Chinese countryside and the Chinese cities really speaks to me because. When you go to the cities, the training atmosphere really isn't that good. You know, it's a lot of people hanging out, smoking yeah. cigarettes, so smoking, and, smoking cigarettes, and drinking tea, drinking yeah. chrysanthemum tea, and yeah. and, uh, and, and discussing discussing like yin yang philosophy, chatting. Yeah, exactly. And it's sort of an exp an expansion of their interest in neo Confucianism. But um, in the in the small towns, boy, some of those people are pretty serious. <laughs> they're pretty serious man i yeah, I'm yeah. impressed and and there are there's a future in china i think right definitely for, for the for the real skill like i mean you know you you can talk theory till you're blue in the face but they don't care like they're like you got you have you got the the shenfa or not yeah yeah exactly and and you can verify it that's the beautiful part the yeah, yeah. verification well i mean you get beaten up a few times, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's how you find out, right? Yeah, no, that's that's how you put it to the test. That's right. But yeah. but I mean, so like overseas, like I, I think there is actually a quite a good because you know, like in China, there are a lot of these problems with like you know, holding back conservatism, like infighting within like even within the same like substyle or this kind of, like all, all this like martial arts politics, right? Yeah. And you know, I'm not saying you know, there isn't that such a thing in the US or Canada or whatever, but I think it's it's not as bad. Not as severe by by any stretch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think that's really interesting. And and do you think that Xingyi will go in a different direction overseas? I think, I mean, like, let, let's take a look at, like, the Southern arts that, you know, because they, they've been out of China for a much longer time and are much more established, right? Um, so like I remember seeing like some documentaries about like Hong Hong Honga, right? So Hong Honga um, or Hong Kun or whatever, um, and that's very well established in like the U uh, New York and and Spain and and all this kind of stuff. And you know they they are managing to have classes of twenty or thirty people uh, training the forms, but also training the two man drills, training the weapons, um, going out in some cases and competing. Uh, in like open formats. Um, I really, really hope that's the direction we're going with Xing Yi. Um, I, I think it's entirely possible. I just think the, you know, it needs some cooperation and, and some effort, uh, like, you know, with, with the official organizations and things. Mm. But, but it also needs, you know, the people to, uh, I mean, in, in, in the UK, right? there haven't been many new teachers of Xing Yi for many years, right? So I, I, I do think there needs to be either people coming back from China to teach, you know, in, back, back at home, or, you know, hopefully we'll get some more uh, new, new good teachers. Uh, because, you know, one of the problems is people leaving China with sports wushu backgrounds and then going like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm teaching Xing Yi or Bagua or whatever. Like, yeah. I mean, that is, that is such a, a tiny fragment of the real system that uh, I don't really think, like if it was just that, I wouldn't bother studying it. Yeah, but, yeah, I hear you. Um, I'm going to maintain my, um, my, my opinional anonymity, but uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate that statement. Um, so now here's a, here's a question for you. Uh, I think we're going to wrap it up pretty soon, but if do you, is it okay if people try to come find you and if they try to come find you what should they talk to you about uh no it's it's totally, it's totally fine for people to come find me i mean you know my my email i have a blog i mean you know people can just uh contact me through the blog uh, what's, the, uh, um, what's the details of the blog uh it's it's called masters of the ima um ho hopefully it's not down at the moment uh, the ima or internal martial arts it, it, it just, it's just called IMA because I, I think internal martial arts was uh, taken or something. Um, so masters, master the IMA, and it's uh, the the web address is Wulin Mingshi. Anyway, so I, I'm contactable, uh, and 
I'm perfectly happy to to help people out. You know, uh, over the years, I have uh, tried to point people in the right direction to various, you know, singi or 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 tai chi or or, or baji teachers or whatever. Um, you know, I the, the whole reason I set that up was that I, I hope more and more people just uh, go to China and learn, you know, authentic traditions. Um, you know, there there is like like saying saying Bagua, right? You know, the full system is inc incredibly comprehensive, right? You know, sing, single movement, circle walking, the the ne gong, the the weapons, like all this kind of stuff, um, and. You know, I don't. I don't think enough of that has made it to the West even now. A lot of it's just forms, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, like like I say, form, form forms don't really give you. So, like, I was just looking at one of the uh, Bagua branches, um, and like the Yin, one of the Yin substyles, and you know, they were saying that a lot of the attribute, the, the attributes that you get from training it are from training the basic movements in the correct way. Right, it's not it's anything to do with these like hundred movement forms or whatever, and but then but then when you look at the requirements for their circle walking or whatever, um, it's incredibly you know most people couldn't do it. Like yeah, it can be strict. Yeah, strict strict circle walking, not just holding your hands up in the air. Like yeah, yeah, there's a lot to it. There there really is a lot to it. Like the footwork, and apparently like you know because it doing it right builds up. You know, huge leg strength, like your your body connection, like yeah. And your hips get flexible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure your choir is much better than mine. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. you know, man. Again, we can psychology. Maybe maybe one day you can interview me and for your blog, and and we can psychologize me that day. <laughs> that, that that would be X rated. No, and why would it be X rated? I mean, we might there might be some funny stories about some. Like the times we went to various push hands groups and stuff, and I embarrassed myself, but that's not that bad. I, I don't remember it like that. I don't remember <laughs> it like that at all. I, I remember you handling yourself very well. <laughs> anyway, um, John, this has been wonderful. So Wulin Mingshir is W U L I N M I N I M I N G S H I. Yeah. S S H I. Dot com or? Uh, it's it's just dot com, I think. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Wulin Mingshir dot com. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll link it anyway in the in the description and, and the article and stuff. So um, cool. we'll know where to find you and and uh, what you're doing. It's wonderful work. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. And uh, perhaps the uh, kebabs and uh, Qingdao uh, can be revived one day. And yeah, man. I mean, you know, so I mean, I'll be in Beijing. Like, you know, if you do any China trips, because it, it is reopening, so. I, I would love to buy you a beer. Well, I'd love to uh, buy you a lamb kebab. <laughs> <laughs> now that's now that's what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. right on. Thanks, John. I'll be in touch by messenger. And uh, I, I really appreciate this. And uh, we will uh, we will talk again soon. Cool. Take, take care. Okay. Take care, Robbie. Right. Best of luck.